Hey everybody, I'm Jordan Lima from Lemur Studios and this is Lemur Studios Presents. We're talking about arts and culture, charitable giving, and healthy living. I'm here with Griff from Brady, and he's from the Slykumu Dance Troupe, and he's an old friend and a new friend all the time. So Griffin, just tell us a little bit about what you're doing and how you got into drumming so much. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Lima. It's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, you know, I have to say my adventure into African music and dance began when I was only 16 years old. And I met a man named Bernard Woma who was the, uh, the master drummer of the National Theater of Ghana for a number of years. I had just was coping with the loss of a good friend and had the encouragement to go and check out this guy who played a xylophone with healing powers. All right. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know about all that, but I'll check it out. And from that day forward, my life had changed. So I've known Griffin for a long time. I didn't know that. You're, you're not just music, though because there's a circus involved in this. Sure. And there's also the uh, Slykumo troupe. Yes. So those are sort of separate, sort of the same, but let's hear a little bit about the so, circus yeah. and then also the troupe. So uh, let's see here. I guess it would start in 2004, my first time to Ghana. Bernard said, if you could come and uh, buy your ticket, I'll host you as long as you want to stay. I have a school. All of the teachers at the school make a group called Sakumu. And Sakumu is a word in the Dagara language that means tradition. And so their whole goal is to preserve these ancient traditions and teach them to the next generation. And so four short years after my first trip to Ghana in 2008, I put together a master's thesis project and bought a short school bus off of eBay Motors. And we managed to bring 15 members of Sakumu to the United States. And we hit the road doing 99 shows in 49 days. That was incredible. Colleges, universities, high schools, elementary schools, but never have I played in a group that has such a profound appeal in every demographic through the tears of joy and just the coming together of unlikely folks in the community this art form has the ability to heal a divide and there's something about the music and the dance that is just uh, something that we can all relate to it feels right it feels profound but really the main focal point of this music is the xylophone. Uh, these xylophone players, man, they were born to play these instruments. And my teacher often told me, you know, that he doesn't really remember learning to play xylophone. He said he's known how to play since he was young. It was something that his parents gave to him. They speak on the instrument in a way that is authentic and genuine and brilliantly polyrhythmic. You know, it's as if they have a brain in their right hand and a brain in their left hand. You know, playing these intricate patterns and the way that they weave together, it's not that often that you get to see something like a West African xylophone as the featured instrument. What do you hear that makes this sound so much different? It buzzes. It buzzes, yeah. Sometimes we go into schools the kids say, hey, your xylophone is broken. Yeah, but it's not a broken sound. It's a very important aesthetic to the music. When Sakumu's in town at the same time as the on the sly jazz musicians and some of the teachers and performers with the Sly Boot Circus, we put together a new collaboration called Sly Kumu, which is uh, more, you know, contemporary takes on traditional uh, pieces. And we actually just got an opportunity this year to get into the, the GCR Goo Goo Dolls fancy. I, I was going to say, is this where I caught up with you at GCR? That was it. That awesome. Was spot. What's going on with the Richmond Prairie Church Project? So oh, this is it's, a really exciting project. I'll tell you, man, it is absolutely a dream come true. We have been collaborating with Rachel Heckel at the Richmond Ferry Church. This project has been going on almost five years now, trying to renovate that place for the new vision of Sly Boots, the Buffalo World Music and Dance Academy. I always envisioned it in some kind of sanctuary where when you walk in, the art is already happening. You know, and putting this uh, art form 
putting these artists who are oftentimes, you know, underappreciated and, and overlooked, you know, to give them a home to share their culture in the appropriate setting. When Rachel came to me about bringing our project to the church, I was overjoyed. The Richmond Ferry Church is going to be a game changer. Very shortly afterward, I caught up with you at 500 Seneca, which was your oh, last yeah. show of the season, right? Yes, it was. That was incredible. Tell us a little bit about how that location came to be sure. and why it was such a good spot for uh, your awesome show. The show is very much music and dance and interaction, so we wanted to make sure it was something that was family friendly. It enabled you to have a sense of community there. Everyone's on the same level, everyone's on the same floor, they can get up and dance easily. Absolutely. It was a great spot for it. And that's what it's all about, you know, is learning by doing. And so the Sly Boots School of Music, Art and Dance, kind of came out of necessity to help facilitate the work. And uh, the whole idea was our dream doesn't have to be just a dream, we just have to be a little sly about it. Through all the trials and tribulations and re-envisionings of the project, you know, we've been learning a lot. And uh, this last April actually was the uh, 11th international tour that we've done together since 2008. This is fantastic and it's part of your upward journey as I've seen over the years and I understand that uh, there's been a recent setback. Uh, you know, Bernard Woma, your mentor since I guess 16 years old, yeah. uh, he's recently passed. Tell me about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, he, uh, he had a long battle with cancer. Never before have I seen such resilience. I mean, with everything that this man was going through, right up until this last year in April, he was on the road with us. Awesome. And he told me towards the end, he said, you know, if God wanted to take me, he could take me today. He could have taken me yesterday. But if he's not gonna take me, I better do my best to get up and live my life and do what I'm meant to do. The, the group went back to Ghana on April 22nd and when the work was finally said and done on April 27th, Bernard decided it was time to rest. Oh my. And probably the first time he has rested since the day he was born. I'm talking a uh, fire in that man's belly that is incomparable to anyone I've ever met. It's a devastating loss for the world. And we're only, you know, we're just so lucky that we have had this time with him. My life will never be the same. Now that leaves you and the troop with a pretty sizable hole. So what, what's the best way for people to help support you and to continue this mission and for you to continue his mission? Sure. What, what's the best way for people to help out with this? Well, you know, the, the, main, the main goal right now is we're trying to bring Sakumu back for their 12th international tour uh, coming up Black History Month. So we're trying to raise money to help offset some of the overhead costs of the tour, including flights and visas. And uh, we're also trying to source uh, schools, universities, high schools, elementary schools, and at our website, uh, www.slybootsbuffalo.com, we have all of the booking information and uh, press kit information that you're going to need. So, Griffin, always great to see you. Yes, sir. Always great to see Griffin in action, too. So I recommend if there's a show that Griffin's involved in, you better check it out. We're going to have links to everything in the description. Closer. His car got busted into, and they stole uh -huh. some drums. We need to support this man. We need to support <laughs> this man. Don't Let's leave your drums in your car. Lesson learned. Oh. And don't steal them, because he makes them. He knows exactly what they look like. He's going to find you. You better believe it. <laughs> Have a go, my friend. He who strikes the drum knows not how far the sound will carry. And I'll find those drums, but in the meantime, I hope they bring you some peace. And if you want to bring them back, you know where to find me. <laughs> I'm speechless. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> Take care.